It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and it's time for your UT. Now, Breaking Bad on Netflix. According to Aaron Paul, he said he does not get residuals from that show. And he was on the SAG after picket line in L.A. along with Brian Cranston and Jesse Plemons last week. Here's what he told Entertainment Tonight Canada. I don't get a piece from Netflix on Breaking Bad, to be totally honest. And that's insane to me. You know what I mean? Like, shows live forever on these streamers, and it goes through waves, you know? Just the other day, that Breaking Bad was trending on Netflix. Yeah, I mean, I think that's crazy. Like, the fact that that show is such a huge so show, and people are making money off of it, and they don't get any piece of that at all, especially when you're a star of a show, right? All right. And that's part of what all of these uh, protests and everything is about right now. Uh, Previously, we talked about Joe Jonas and him filing for divorce uh, from his wife, Sophie Turner. Remember this, Dan? We talked about how he allegedly saw something on the ring doorbell or heard something. Yes. Well, now it looks like her side of the story is being told. Mm -hmm. And according to TMZ, sources are saying that he pressured her to attend events as she was struggling after giving birth. They said their youngest child was born a year ago, and Sophie didn't want to leave their home. She didn't want to be photographed or go to events. Nevertheless, she went to several events with him. But at one specific event, people said that she made it clear she was uncomfortable and didn't want to be there. Um, So that is, I guess, from her side. It feels like with TMZ, one person saying one thing and then the other person's team is coming back to kind of refute that because nobody wants to look bad in the press. (laughs) Hmm. All right, ASAP Rocky has gotten the Virgil Abloh Award in Harlem, so congratulations to him for that. And he said several years back uh, they were too young to get inside a club, but Virgil knew who they were, and he said that instantly made him and the rest of the uh, ASAP Mob crew feel validated. All right, so shout out to him for getting that award in Harlem. E40 has launched a new pina colada flavored wine. By the way, E40 is caking up. Mm Mm-hmm off of his uh, spirits companies. He has his Earl Stevens selections. I don't know if you ever had it, Dan, but they are pretty good. We've had it before. Yeah. We've had it up up here. I think I had like the mango scotto or something like that. He sent it for lip service. Yeah, so we enjoy that. So now he has a Pina Scotto, a pina fl- uh, colada flavored wine. They said it's a blend of pineapple, toasted coconut, and the classic character of Moscato to create a unique and innovative wine concoction like none other. Gonna try it? Um... I can't have anything pineapple related. Oh, you're right. Yeah, so right. I always have to be careful about that. And so, unfortunately, not that one, but I'll work on the other ones. I'll try it for you. Thank you. Um, Ethan Hawke, he talked about directing his daughter, and this is for their film Wildcat. Now, he spoke to Variety about this. Imagine this, right? Ethan Hawke co wrote and directed the film, and she stars as a novelist, and she portrays. Um, she portrays Flannery O'Connor. And there's some sex scenes. So imagine you have a daughter. You wrote a script. She's starring in this movie. And now you have to direct your own daughter in sex scenes. What do you think Ethan Hawke had to say about it's that? wild. Well, he asked, uh, when asked about it, he said, we were so comfortable with it, I couldn't care less. He said, we made sure to have an intimacy coordinator on set so they felt safe and comfortable and not like they were being spied on. Um, so that was the way to go about it. How many takes do you think they had to do? He's probably like, that's it. You got it. Yep, Nailed one it. one and done. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it and her in just one take. <laughs> Did you think so? E- 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 okay. Um, and Beyonce, listen, that concert, we told you guys, Little Rel proposed to his girlfriend at the concert during Love on Top. And Little Rel went on TMZ Live yesterday, and here's what he had to say about almost missing his engagement. As soon as I start using the bathroom, that's when Love on Top coming on. So I start screaming. And I, and so now I'm trying to hurry up and use the bathroom. I forget where the seats are. It's at the part where Miss Tina told me where I should be proposing. So this will make the story even funny. The audience is singing their part way longer than usual to any show she's done because they're trying <laughs> to get me to do the engagement. So I find a seat. I see the cameraman standing that's And so I, this is what I do out the trouble. Beyonce literally did like this. And so I, I went to go, the camera's on me, I went to propose, but she had to move on to the next song. <laughs> Can you imagine? No, I couldn't. It sounds Ooh. terrible for him. Yeah. Just put all that planning into it, especially to do it on that type of stage. And then it's the bathroom. 
then it's the bad thing. But that's dope. Listen, you'll always remember that song. You'll always remember Beyonce for that. Yeah. Imagine being able to tell all your friends, here's the video footage of my man proposing to me at a Beyonce concert. Imagine getting that favor and then disappointing Beyonce that you're not ready for the moment. Or imagine she said no. Ooh, nothing worse Probably than that. Probably better than letting her down. Okay. <laughs> all right. You, I was going to ask you a question, but I'm not. Okay. You know what it was? I have an idea. Okay. Since we were talking about, uh, I always think about like, what is the best way when you're, because you have a girlfriend and when you think about it, right, you have to think about what would suit them if yeah. you were going to get, because um, some people might not want to be proposed to in front of people. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. Or maybe, all right. Or um, not. And the UFC and WWE are close to a merger next week. And... That'll be a huge deal, okay? They had originally said that it would be uh, closing in mid to late September. And so now the deal is going to take control of WWE and merge it into a new standalone entity with the UFC. Um, and that will be valued, they said, at $21 billion. That is a huge, a money. huge deal. All right, so uh, shout out to them for that, by the way. I went to uh, SummerSlam in Brooklyn before. At the Barclays. Remember? Have you ever been to a UFC fight? I have not been to a UFC fight, but I have been to mixed martial arts fights. Uh -huh. I was in Detroit at um at Motor City, and they do that. They have like the they do those fights there. So I went. Those are a lot of fun to go to. It is definitely yeah. a lot of fun, and it was very wild. All right, well that is your Yeezy. Now when we come back um, today, we also are going to be talking to Lauren Lake. You know she has. Her own show right now, Paternity Matters. She's also a judge, um, and she's an amazing person. So we're going to talk to her about her new show and breaking off and doing her own thing. And how I know that's a scary thing to do, but she's such a role model. I love Lauren Lake. She'll be joining us today. It's Way Up with Angela Yee.